Greetings from from where are we? Somewhere on planet Earth. <clears throat> Welcome to planet Earth. The Bumi <clears throat> Bumi Loka. Welcome, welcome, everyone, to the land of Saturday Sangha. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stop it, um, ye na bootale. Swayam rupa gadamahyam. Dadati swapadantikam. Vande hum shri guru. Shri yutta paragamalam. Shri guru vaishnavangscha. Shri rupam sagrajata. Sahagana raganatangitam tang sajivam. Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitamscha Nama O Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinami Namaste Saraswati Deme Gauravani Pracharine Nevishesha Shunyavadi Aschatya De Shatarine Vancha Kalpat Rubyascha Kripa Sindubya Ebacha Patitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namo Nama E Krishna Karana Sindhu Dinabando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Brindavaneshvari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garadhar Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sanatanam Rupam Udiyushokshita Sanatanam Rupam Udiyushokshita Predat Adana Vrajakana Nishayo Tat keli kalpa gamasangati lita Sadali vitir Sadali vitir Anuraginir vaje. I worship Srila Rupa Goswami and Srila Sanatan Goswami, who brought Radha and Krishna, the king and queen of Vrindavan out of their hearts into this world. Revealed their pastimes from the Vedic scriptures and who are followed by all those devotees who love Krishna. Hmm. Sadali Vitir Anuraginir Bhaje. And here's a prayer to Rupa Goswami. Adadana strinang dantair idam ya punapunaha 
Srimat Rupa Padam Boja Rajoham Syam Bhave Bhave. Taking a blade of grass between my teeth, I repeatedly beg. <clears throat> birth after birth, may I be the dust of Srila Rupa Goswami's lotus feet. Hmm. Raja means dust. So, Srimad Rupa Pada Amboja Raja. The dust of the Amboja Lotus Pada. Syam, may I be, Bhave. Syam, Bhave, Bhave. Uh, would be birth after birth, existence after existence. Adadana, Trinam Dantaya. Adadana, I think, means taking. Trina means, of course, grass. Danta means teeth. With the teeth. Idam Yache, this prayer, Punaha, Punaha, again and again. So nice. Oh, and then here's, well, we chanted this, but can chant again. Sri Chaitanya Mano Abhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kada Mahyam Dadati Sva Padantika. So this is a, a prayer in the form of a question, Kada, when? When will Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada who has established the mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya, give me shelter at his lotus feet. Mana abhishtam, the desire of the mind. Of Sri Chaitanya. Stapitam, established. Yena, by whom? Bhutale, on the surface of the earth. Svayam, himself. Rupaha, Rupa Goswami. Kada Mahyam. When Mahyam means of me, Dadati, he will give or he gives. Uh, sva pada antika. The shelter of his own feet. The inside antika. Or the end antika. Yeah. Okay. So... Here we are, and uh, this is Saturday, the 25th of March, in the year 2021, no, 23. Um, and what are we going to do today? We're going to sing Bhaktivinoda Thakur's song, Janama Sapalatara, from Haliana Kalpataru, Uchvasa Kirtan, Rupa Kirtan, song number one. Oh, this is a new section. Janama Sapala Tara. Sapala, Pala means fruit, result, and Sapala with fruit. And Janama means birth uh, with a little extra syllable, janma, <clears throat> and tara, 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 of him, tara. Okay, so the song goes like this. Janama sapala tara krishna darashana jara bhagye holjache akkabar Bikashya 
Dikasya Hrin Nayana Kori Krishna Darasana Chare Jiva Chitter Bikar. His birth is successful, whose good fortune dawns so as to have the vision of Lord Krishna just once. When the jiva gives up all delusions of mind, then only he will see the vision of Krishna blooming within the eyes of his heart. Oh, that's nice. The eyes of the heart. So, hrin nayana. Hrin, um, from hrit, and then it becomes hrin because of Sandi and Vikasya uh, becomes manifest. Having become manifest, Rinayana Kori Koriya Krishna Darshan Chade Jiva Chitter Vikar. Uh, then the Jiva Chade, I think, is giving up and the Vikar, the um, the upside downness <laughs> of the chitta, <clears throat> delusions of the mind. Brinda, oh, why does he do that? Okay, sometimes in verse two and verse five, we have three lines instead of four. Brindavana keli chaturvanamali. Trivanga Bangi Mara Bangi Bangi Marupa Bangi Marupa Bamshidari Aparupa Rasamoy Nidhi Gunashali. He sees Krishna there fully decorated with garlands of forest flowers as the most expert connoisseur of all the amorous love sports in Vrindavan, his transcendental playing wonderfully on his flute, mellows and is the abode of all form, bent in three different places. He is a reservoir of all relishable, virtuous qualities. Okay, Aparupa. I don't know what's that about. Let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. The abode of all form? No, that would be... Angima. Hmm. I don't know. Hopefully that's transcribe properly. Maybe we have to check. Okay, bear with me. We're going to check to see if we got the right transcription here. Uh, There. Uh oh, I hope this doesn't take too much time to find. Let's see. Amito Turjana. Is this where we want to be? Oh, maybe I shouldn't spend this time. Hmm. No, that would take too much time to find. Next time. Uh, we have the Bengali Kalyana Palpaturu, but... Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Varna Nabha Jaladhar Shireshiki Pichabar. 
अलथा तिलक शोभा पाए हरिदाने पित्तवास वर्णे मधुर हास हेनो रूप जगत माताए and a bit more description of Krishna here. By such a beautiful form, he is maddening the entire universe. His complexion is like that of a fresh new rain cloud. His head is decorated with a big peacock feather. A big peacock feather. Not just a peacock feather, but a big peacock feather. And his sandalwood tilak on his forehead is most becoming. Most becoming, that's a kind of English expression, means attractive. Wearing brilliant yellow-colored garments, he stands with his face decorated by a wide, sweet smile. A wide, sweet smile. Madhura Asa. Arindan Pitavas, he's dressed in pit, Pitavasa, yellow cloth. It seems like Krishna is always wearing yellow. Anarupa Jagat Matai, uh, and this form is maddening the entire universe. I don't know if it says it's a big peacock feather. It just says shire on the head. Shiki picha is a peacock feather. Vara. Vara doesn't mean big. It means excellent. I don't know. Maybe it can mean also large. Alaka tilaka. Alaka tilaka shobha pai. Alaka must be forehead, and tilaka means tilaka. Shobha apai, shining on his forehead. Okay, number four. Indra nila jini, Krishna rupa khani. Heriya kadamba mule mana uchatana na chale charana shangshara gelam mule. That's in a different meter. Indra nila Krishna. Yeah, huh. okay. Beholding him standing. Thusly, at the edge of a Kadamba grove, I can see that Krishna's beauty is conquering the luster of an entire mine of sapphires. Seeing this, my mind has become so restless that my feet will move no longer. And I've completely forgotten about my family and home life in this world. Indra Nila, Nila Jini. Jini, I think, is the comparative. So like Indra Nila, Krishna Rupa Kani. Um, Kani, I think, can be the plural. Krishna's forms. Hariya. Seeing or having seen Kadamba Mule at the root of a Kadamba. He says it's a grove of Kadambas, but I say it's at, he's at the root or at the foot of a Kadamba tree. And something we learned from Dinabandhu Prabhu in Biharvan when we went there on Parikram. There's different kinds of kadamba trees. Uh, there's the kadamba trees you see in Mayapur. They grow kind of straight up. And they grow very fast. 
And there's other Kadamba trees. He pointed to one old Kadamba tree. It was not at all straight. It was anything but straight. It was going in many directions. And um, he said, that's a Kadamba tree. In any case, Krishna stands at the root of a Kadamba tree. Mana uchatana na chale charana. Oh. My mind has become restless. That must be uchatana. 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 I don't know. And that my feet don't move. Na chale charana. <laughs> na chale charana. That's quite poetic. Mana uchatana na chale charana. Shongshar gelam bhule. Bhule means forgetting. And shongshara means, in Bengali, it means family. Means family, worldly existence. Gelam, it's gone, forgotten. <laughs> Shongshar gelam bhule. It's, what is that? <laughs> Saki he sudamaya se rupa madhuri tekile noyana hoy achetana jahare premamoy bari. Another three liner. O oh, Saki, O oh, dear girlfriend, seeing that sweet form abounding in nectar. I have fallen unconscious as a fountain of tears born of ecstatic love cascades from my eyes. Sudamoy. Yeah, nectar, it, it's translated sudha. Hmm, I think also means liquor, but it's often translated like this, nectar. So, Sudha Moya, constitutive of, of nectar. Serupa Madhuri, that sweet form. Dakile, seeing. Nayana, hoy achetana, I became unconscious. Or I become unconscious. Jare prema moy, body. Jare prema moy, body. Hmm. Um, okay, so ecstatic love, prema, jare. Jare body. Iba chuda shire. Iba vam shikore. Kiba se tribanga tame, tama. Chorana kamale, kamale, amia uchale, tahate nupur, dama. What a wonderful crown upon his head. What a wonderful flute he is holding in his hand. What a wonderful, beautiful form as he stands in his threefold bending posture. The nectar of his lotus feet is overflowing with the tinkling sound coming from the clusters of ankle bells which are decorating them. The Chuda Shire. What a wonderful Chuda. Crown shire on his head, iba bamshi kore. What a wonderful mm, flute! What a flute! I think literally, it's it's like what a flute! What a flute! Kare in his hand, iba se tribanga tama tama. Oh, this wonderful form. Three full bending form. Charana Kamale. 
lotus feet amya uchale. Hmm. With me. Ahate Nupur Dham. Nupur is the uh, the ankle bells that we know. Then, last one. Said, oh, what? Oh, it's just numbered wrong. Number seven. Sada Asha Kori Bringarupadhari Chorono Komale Stan Anayase Pai Krishna Gunagai Aro na Bajibo Ano. Accepting the form of a honeybee. Bring a rupa dari. I always hope for a residence near his lotus feet. Sada Asha Kari. Chorana Kamale Stana. Stana is a position, a residence. And I will get it very easily. Because I always sing the glories of Krishna adoring no one else. Huh. Anayase Pai. Pai is obtained to get. Anayase, I think, is will come. Uh, Krishna Gunagai. I sing the qualities uh, of Krishna, the gunas. Aro na bajibo ano. I think that last ano would be, in Sanskrit, would be anya, other. Aro na bajibo ara. I don't um, worship, I will not worship anyone else. So he's confident. <laughs> I'm going to get a place at Krishna's lotus feet. Why? Because I worship no one else. He's confident. Okay, let's see how this might sound. And we have we have our backup band here. <laughs> of uh, Rajadukta Gopal and Amrita Lahari. Janama Sapala Hara Krishna Dara Shana Janama Bhagya Hoje Eka Bhagya Janama Sampa Hada Krishna Dada Shana Jana Bhagya Hoi Ache Ekar Vaya Ekashiyan Ren Nai Anda Ekashiyan Ren Nai Anda Hare Krishna Darshan Ekashiyan Ren Nai Anda Hare Krishna Dara Shana Chade Chiba Chitte Hare Chade Chiba Chitte 
छाद वृंदवन के लिए वृंदवन के चतुर्वन मे वृंदवन के वृंदवन के लिए चतुर्वन मे वृंद श्री बंग बंगी रूपा बंशी दानी आभार श्री बंग बंगी रूपा बंशी दानी आभार रसम निधि गुना शाले रसम निधि गुना शाले असम निधि गुना शाले रसम जाल शिरे शिखी इच्छा बाण जाल शेरे शिखे इच्छा अल्लाह का चिला का शुभ अल्लाह का चिला का शुभ हारे धन है बस वरने जगत जगत Now this is a different meter. Indra Nila Chandi Krishna Rupa Kam. In Indra Nila Chandi Krishna Rupa Kam. In Indra. Indranila Chini Krishna Rupa Kam. चले 
and again the change in meter <laughs> Saki he Sudhama Se Rupa Madhuri Saki he Sudhama Se Rupa Madhuri Jaki le Nayana Poya Yachetana Jaki Jare Prema Maya Jare Prema Maya Pani Kiba Chuda Shire Kiba Bam Shikade Kiba Chuda Shire Kiba Bam Shikade Iba se Shivanga Tama Shivanga Iba se Shivanga Tama Chada na utkama, amiya utchale, chada na utkama, amiya utchale, chada na utkama, amiya utchale. Kahate nupura da. Ahade no put up Sada Asha Kodi, bring the roof of the bring Sada Asa Kori, bring a rupa dali. Jarana Mama Stama. Jarana Mama Stama. Anaya se hai, Tishambhula nanda Tishambhula nanda Anaya se hai, Tishambhula nanda Aruna bhajiva anaya Arunam Jeeva, 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Rama Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Oh, I uh i see a message no sound hmm. <laughs> well we have sound Excuse me, Guru Maharaj, I apologize. Uh, it's just uh, your sound profile on your laptop is set to speech instead of to music. So that's why uh, the, your laptop is basically oh. cutting cutting the sound. Uh, whatever is not speech, it's cutting out. So, you know, only few, few, uh, you, your, your singing is uh, audible, but not nothing else. So that was the kind of. Mother uh, Jivan and Nita Prabhu is not there, so it, that was not set. I think that's why 
Na dann. Okay, thank you for the explanation. So it says original sound for musicians off. Uh, but now we're not singing anymore, so I guess we should leave it off, right? And no, it's, it's a part of your uh, laptop sound profile, not Zoom itself, but on your on your laptop. There is oh. a sound, sound settings on the Mac OS where oh. this should be changed, like a microphone profiles. Oh, oh. But for now, it's okay, yes? Yes, for speech is perfect, only for music. All right. I would I would not have known. All right. Um, welcome again, everyone, all of you, um, in all of the places where you are, and you are in many places. But we're all on the same planet, planet Earth. We're all spinning around somewhere in this universe, happily spinning around until we get spun off, <laughs> until Krishna says, okay, you've been spinning on this planet enough, off you go. <laughs> and that's, that will be, that will be happening <laughs> at some point for all of us. Yes, we're all here in Poland. We are saddened by the sudden departure, quite sudden of, Padma Gandhi Prabhu, who is, was one of the senior devotees of the Yatra. I must say, I hardly knew him myself, but I understand he was kind of one of the pioneers and one of the temple presidents for Warsaw Temple, yes, other temple, Warsaw. Yeah. Uh, so... Um, and our condolences are there for all the devotees who have been close to him. In particular, uh, his wife, Govinda Stali, who is our uh, Shishya, uh, and her, her daughter, 10-year-old daughter. That's tough. Um, I'm always forgetting her name. Natalia. Yeah, Natalia. Yeah, it's going to be tough for them. May Krishna care for them nicely. Hmm. Yeah, we're here in this uh, transit station called the material world. We're in transit. I was in transit um, when I came back from Mumbai to Warsaw. Uh, it was um, Swiss Air, so it flew to Zurich. So I was in transit in Zurich. And uh, had to go through uh, security and uh, also passport check in Zurich. And then I went to my gate, which was way, way at the very end of the airport and all the way downstairs. And I was the first, it was this big hall. Um, and I was the only person there <laughs> for some time. And I wondered, am I in the right place? And that's sort of, a good feeling to have in this material world. Am I in the right place? Maybe not. Yes, so um, speaking of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, there's a new book, uh, which most of us will probably not read because it's in Bengali. Um, but it's uh, it's been published recently by Bhaktivedanta Research Center and Days Publications. <laughs> this Days Publications because uh, Shantanu Day is the the one who 
uh, prepared. What is it? It's Shishimat Kedarnat Datta Bhaktivinod Thakurer Svalikita Jivani. So this is the autobiography. Um, Bhaktivinod Thakur wrote uh, a, a short autobiography at one time uh, for his son, uh, one of his sons. Um, which son? Um, the name slips the mind, the important. Lalita. Lalita. Yes, that's it, Lali Prasad. So he wrote this biography of himself, an autobiography, and now it's been published in Bengali. And uh, it was big news in Bengal. They made a big uh, public book launching uh, some time ago. And uh, I received a copy which I'm happy to have. It's going to be translated. Uh, it's already been translated years ago. Someone translated into English. But uh, there's going to be, let's say, a proper uh, translation. The, the previous translation also was not a full translation, apparently. It was, uh, yeah, it wasn't complete. So this translation is going to be complete and that's being done also by um, Bhaktivedanta Research Center. They have lots of different dot, lots of projects. I met um, Dr. Samantha Rudra in Mumbai and he was describing me very enthusiastically all the different projects they have coming up, publishing especially. And while we're talking about books, I think it's interesting that this book has come out, The Philosophy of the Brahma Sutras, <clears throat> An Introduction, and this is by Alexander Uskokov, other, otherwise known amongst the devotees as Atmarama Prabhu. And Atmarama uh, from Macedonia um, did his higher education in the US, University of Chicago. Uh, and now he teaches at University of Yale, Yale University, which is one of the what they call Ivy League universities. So now he's done this, uh, I've just glanced at it, but it's very nicely done, uh, introduction to Brahma Sutras, also known as Vedanta Sutra. And it's been published by Bloomsbury, Bloomsbury Academic. It's a respected academic publisher. So devotees are making an impact. Uh, where's the oh. okay? Chapter titles, introduction, situating the Brahma Sutra. Chapter one, reception history. Chapter two, philosophy, theology, and the idea of scripture. Three, ontology and the problems of causality or the purpose of creation. Five, Brahman and the problem of evil. Six, the doctrine of meditation on Brahman. And seven, the individual soul, liberation and attainment of Brahman. Yeah, so making accessible what is otherwise difficult subject. Of course, there's been lots and lots and lots of books written about uh, Vedanta, but hmm, my guess is this is gonna be a very nicely balanced book. And of course, 
unlike some books which only give you Vedanta, uh, Advaita Vedanta, he is going to refer to Chaitanya Vedanta and uh, hmm, he doesn't mention Gaudiya Vaishnava. Hey, let's see, Paladeva. If Baladeva, yes, Baladeva is represented, Baladeva Vidya Bhushana. And uh, of course, Madhva and Ramanuja, they're all there. So, okay, that's my show and tell for today. Oh, um, no, there's one more show and tell. Uh, speaking of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, um, one thing they want to do, they want to publish, I think together with University of Mumbai, uh, is a book on Bhakti, I think Bhakti and Vaishnavism, I'm not sure. And they asked me, do I have any articles that I've already written that I could kind of recycle? <laughs> so we're going to see. But um, the article that I wrote ages ago, ages, I mean, like two, like 20 years ago, um, about Bhaktivinoda Thakur's First, writing on Vaishnavism, uh, his his book, it, not a book, it was a pamphlet, The Bhagavata, its philosophy, its ethics, and its theology. So I've written an article about this. And now I'm just going through it and making sure that it's, uh, that it still makes sense and that it's uh, representative. It's interesting. Um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in his Svalikita Jivani, his, uh, his um, autobiography, uh, it's mentioned he was not able to enter the university because of illness. Uh, he was not able to take the entrance exams because of illness. So what did he do? He just started reading himself and taught himself what he wanted to know. He was self-educated. And he mentions who, which uh, authors he was reading. And these include... Edison, I don't know which Edison, Carlyle, this is an English author, Haslitt, also English, Jeffrey, I guess English, Macaulay, <laughs> Macaulay was the notorious um, person who said that all the, all the books of uh, Sanskrit could basically be uh, thrown away because they're useless. Uh, what we need is English education. Uh, and he also read Milton, John Milton. John Milton wrote Paradise Lost, one of the famous, famous poems of the English language considered, considered, uh, super important. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur was reading, was reading these works um, in his youth. And he's explaining about his, um, the context of his giving this presentation, which then becomes this pamphlet. He says, uh, when he was in Dinajpur, he had been sent there on his, uh, uh, as his, uh, mm, 
as his work. At this time, he says, there was a lot of fighting between the Hindus and the Brahmos. Who are the Brahmos? The Brahma Samaj. And the Brahma Samaj was this group that was founded uh, by Ramohan Roy in the early 19th century as a kind of reform movement uh, of Hinduism, which was inspired by sort of non-dualist Upanishads and which rejected the uh, Puranas completely, including the Bhagavatam. So there was fighting, he says, between the Hindus and the Brahmas in Dinajpur. The schoolmasters were Brahmos, members of this Brahma Samaj. But almost everyone else was Hindu. The Hindus were endeavoring to put the Brahmos out of their caste. At that time, the Brahmos invited me to come to their assembly and I wrote to them saying that I was not a Brahmo, but was a servant of the many followers of Chaitanya. When the Brahmos heard this, they gave up hope of my becoming a Brahmo. Okay. The Hindus invited me to form a sabha, um, an institution, an assembly, for Hindus, and the first meeting was held in the house of Kajanji Babu. I gave a lecture on the Bhagavata, which was published as a book. A few sahibs heard the lecture and were impressed. A, sah a sahib uh, means a British. It actually means like a master, I think, like a lord. So the, mm, the British were referred to as sahib when they referred to them respectfully, sahib. And uh, British women were called mem sahib. Anyway, he says that some of the sahibs were listening and they were impressed. They liked his speech, which um, his his pamphlet is in English language, so I'm guessing that he spoke also in English, but I don't know. Okay, anyway, so that's something I'm a little bit working on now. Hare Krishna, everyone. What news, what news? What showing, what telling? <laughs> Ramananda Gopal, you were doing lots of pujas for um, Padma Gandhi. He's not responding. Okay. Uh, Divyambara, you have some news for us? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj Dandavat. Hare Go. Um, yes, we had um, this last Thursday. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm still very tired. We hosted um, a private dinner for 20 very influential people who are, who, they were participating in the conference of the United Nations related to preserving water preservation on the planet. And there were two guests of honor. I mean, I mean, everybody was like a CEO, president of very large companies in the world. And the guests of honors were the CEO of the Bayer company, you know, the, the huge pharmaceutical, agricultural, the company that bought Monsanto. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the, their top CEO, was here and also the the star of the show so to say was Mina Guli she's a very very nice lady vegan 
um, who ran 200 marathons last year to increase all over the world, to increase water awareness and to show uh, what issues people have with local water. So, mm. um, so we had also the the leaders of Bayer here in the United States and um, political figures and <laughs> all kinds. Of, when I looked at the guest list, I was like, "Wow!" But um, the good news is they all had Prasad. <laughs> yeah, nice. And, and they really enjoyed it. They they loved our event space. Um, they enjoyed the atmosphere. Um, the service and at the end they were literally all hugging me like they were just so happy with everything so um two of them um said that they wanted to reach out to us and see if we can collaborate in relation to plant-based culinary education um so i don't know with your blessings uh -huh. <laughs> um, but yep <laughs> What was the venue of this play, this event? It's uh, it's our event space. We call it Tirta House. It's the space we've been in. This is also our teaching kitchen here, and the. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's I've been. You showed me the place. Yeah, yeah. you haven't been here yet, but yes, <laughs> it's. I beautiful. haven't been there. Oh, so it's a different place. Okay. Yes, it, it's new place. It's um, really beautiful. And we want to develop more and more of these uh, special private events for very influential people because these people change policies and, yeah. and they change, if they make good policies. It will benefit people at large. Yeah, they're the, they're the people who can make something happen. And you can feed them. <laughs> yeah, that's where we start. And the nice and the connection was made. They found out about us because one of their he's the president of a very large uh, business consulting international consulting company, mm. and he's a huge fan of Divis Kitchen of our restaurant. Mm. And um, he just spoke on and on about the social impact that we have, especially in relation to food and education. Um, and yeah, it was very humbling, really. Uh -huh. But also very, uh, we're very grateful, very, uh, very gratifying to, to have that connection. So mm. your blessings, we pray to continue to serve in this way more. Very good, very good. Maybe that's the sort of thing you can eventually do, uh, Leela Mai Radha, in Hong Kong, is connect with connect with all the big shots of Hong Kong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for the inspiration. <laughs> I think also Radha Charan Prabhu in Beijing could give you some ideas for how to connect to uh, the right people. Yeah. Just thinking aloud, but nice. Okay. Thank you, Tivyambara. Good for you. Let's see. Krishna Ragini, how are you? Are you in Timiswara? Yes. Hare Krishna, Hare Bol. Hare this Krishna. is my humble obeisances. Jai, jai. I am in Timiswara now. Uh huh. And. Um, <laughs> it's all I can say <laughs> for the moment. Okay. <laughs> Timiswara Yatra Ki Jai. Jai. Yeah, we have a new place. 
Oh. It is, uh, yes, we have a new place. Now we passed over the problem because for one year we had an almost no place. Yeah. Because of the court case. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so we got a new place now and uh, we'll see. We are still in court case with the old place. Mm. And we'll see what will be the outcome. <laughs> mm. uh, but this will be in time. Yeah. One way or another. Yeah. Okay. Well, hope for the so, best. Yeah, hope. Hoping for the best. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's all. <laughs> okay. I can see. Okay. That's fine. Thank you for asking me. <laughs> um, and we see, we see Shashini Shiva here. And you're back in Ljubljana, I presume. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Yes, we are back in Kran, but already a long time. It's one month already. <laughs> Kran, yes. Okay, and uh, Kirti Danandini is there also, uh, also in Kran, isn't it? Yes, we are almost neighbors, <laughs> the closest ah. neighbors. Okay, so speaking of Slovenia, I'm starting to make travel plans, and it looks like I'll come to Slovenia uh, around 15th of April. Oh. Uh, but, nice. but it'll be kind of a short visit, like two weeks. Okay. Uh, this time. And hopefully then maybe again, maybe again in August. I'm not sure yet. Okay. That's nice. We're happy. <laughs> All right. Any anyone else? Any news? Everyone is. Everyone is being quiet. Okay. What shall we do? We can read something from Ramayana. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have a. We have a Ram, we have some Ramayana fans here in the audience, in the live audience. And we left them with a cliffhanger this morning. You know a cliffhanger? Everyone know what a cliffhanger is? No. See Tarani says no. Cliffhanger is when you're telling a story. And just before you come to the uh the donnement the uh re resolution of the whatever it is the trouble just before that you stop and you say we will continue next time so we were reading about rama's killing of vali which I find interesting because a lot of reasons it's interesting. It's um, it's where Rama, who is supposed to be the perfect embodiment of of Dharma, seems to be doing something completely non-dharmic, and so it becomes a subject of great debate over centuries. Aha, uh -huh. Vrindapati wants already to say something about this. I, sh I should have guessed. Oh, sorry. I, I wasn't actually in the room. I was going to share something else because I had um, somebody in the home. So sorry, I missed the topic. What am I saying something about? <laughs> <laughs> You're saying something about Rama's killing Bali. Oh, Rama's killing Bali. Okay, right. No, I wasn't going to say anything about that. Sorry. 
<laughs> what do you want to say something about? Um, I thought I had somebody downstairs and they've left now. So I, I wanted to actually share um, to, that today is they are celebrating uh, to the Bhakti Yoga Center, which Guru Maharaj came to. They're doing a 10 year anniversary celebration. Um, they've the devotees have gone on Harinam today. Uh -huh. And uh, tomorrow they're having uh, a celebration at uh, the Bhakti Yoga Center, and uh, we'll have some local speakers and like people like Kripa Moya Prabhu and Jaini Thai Prabhu from Soho Street to come and uh, just, you know, we'll have a small celebration. So I wanted to just share that that's a kind of a, a kind of land, a kind of what do you call it? a milestone? That's right, a milestone. milestone yes. Yeah, for uh, for Iskong Crowley. Yeah. And uh, the other thing I was going to say was that we, I finally have found a different uh, project because before we were doing trees in Madagascar with a company, um, which is not the Eden project of Cornwall, but there's another Eden project that does um, reforestation in um, Madagascar, Nepal, and a few other places, mostly Madagascar and other places um, in South America. But um, there's a, a website called vanamali.net and we coincidentally we had the same we had the same name a project that I started uh, which um, we started during lockdown which is called uh, the Vanamali project what we wanted to do was have a collaboration platform for different projects that are existing in South Asia uh, to communicate with each other for reforestation and um, permaculture and and you know restoration of these kind of things vanamali.net is actually a reforestation project in barsana and um, they're going to try to reforest and and preserve the landscape and so we've uh, this company um, this organization is run by a lady called Padmavati she's originally from Andhra Pradesh and um, um, she's uh, got land she's managed to be able to be given land as a grant from the local governments to reforest mm -hmm. and uh, what we're doing what I'm hoping to be involved with now is is to help with um, protecting the the forests of Raj with um, not just trees but also with grasses and conservation of the um of the environment it's uh, of th that particular environment which is you know a forest is more than just trees there's there's much more than that involved as well mm -hmm. that was another piece of news that i had and Great. the final piece of news that i had was um i'm excited that i wanted to share with you and uh, just took this as an opportunity whilst we were all sharing um that i finished the first draft of my book um which is um the faith crisis oh and I'm um, I'm going to be in touch with uh, at the moment with some friends and and devotees to kind of just read it and just give some feedback on what they think mm -hmm. you know the book can tell because they probably need to move some chapters around still and a lot of things that I still have to to supplement inside the book maybe areas that I haven't covered in discussion mm -hmm. but yeah I just wanted to share that uh, those are my three pieces of news. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to share. Thank you. Well done. Very good. Yeah. Regarding uh, the reforestation, etc., in Brudge, one thing occurs to me: you might want to connect with um, Bhakti Vigyan Goswami mm -hmm. because he has this project uh, at Govardhan uh, in which they're creating a, a little kind of miniature forest, a park uh, within their compound, mm -hmm. which is um, populated with all the different traditional plants. They did research uh, to find out what are all these plants that are mentioned in different shastras. And they've actually been able to collect these from different places. And uh, they've brought them together. So there's, I don't know her name, but the, 
I guess a disciple of Bhaktivedanta Maharaj uh, has been doing this research. Oh, that's so that true. research might be useful for what you are uh, involved with. Yeah, that might be useful for them to collaborate together as well if they're if they're doing that because the company that I have has a nursery where they mm. are growing local species. Mm. But Madhavi herself and another devotee, his name is Radha Madhav Das, uh, both have uh, academic backgrounds in um, in some environmental sciences, so they also have some. And they live there also in uh, living there currently. So yeah, mm. maybe I will um, kind of investigate and find out who this person is. And that might be a good collaboration already, you know, just yeah. if it's already there happening, somebody's doing it. One's in Barsana and one at Govr, then it's kind of the same breath. Yes. <laughs> Excuse the pun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> what they have at Govardhan, uh, they have just a small, relatively small project. It's, I think, four hectares land. Mm -hmm. um, and within that, they're building a whole, you know, temple, guest house, residences for brahmacharis, etc. But they're also having this kind of uh, little forest in the center, which includes... Um, they have six, uh, like bhajan kutirs within each one dedicated to one of the six Goswamis, mm -hmm. and they have a miniature Radha Kund Shamakunda. <laughs> it's all still in very early stages, but uh, it's a very impressive plan they have. Mm -hmm. So good. Okay. So uh, since Ram Navami is coming up, I should maybe also mention tomorrow is appearance day of Ramanuja Acharya. So Ramanuja Acharya Kijai. <laughs> mm. Um our Gaudiya Jiva Goswami quotes Ramanuja's commentaries uh, on Vedanta Sutra. As I understand, he, he refers to him more than he refers to Madhvacharya. So there's a good amount of, uh, you could say, philosophical kinship that we hold uh, with Ramanuja and the Sri Sampradaya. Okay, so here we are um, in Kishkindakanda, and this is Sarga number 17. And uh, Bali has just been shot with this arrow uh, from Lord Rama. Rama has been hiding, uh, and from a position of hiding, he shot while Bali was fighting with his brother, Sugriva. Hmm. And uh, this is a very shocking thing for a Kshatriya to do such a thing. And um, Bali does not die immediately. He has a lot to say before he dies. <laughs> uh, and this is what he said. Because of you, I have met my death while in the heat of battle with someone else. What possible merit have you gained by killing me? when I was not looking. And then he lists all the uh, famous virtues of Rama and says, this is what everyone says about you. Uh, and so 
that was my understanding that you have this good reputation for good reason. And therefore, when my wife Tara warned me that you might do something like this, I didn't believe her. Uh, and so I didn't, I didn't believe her and I didn't expect this of you. Then he says, I did not know that your judgment was destroyed and that you were a vicious evildoer hiding under a banner of righteousness like a well overgrown with grass. I did not know that you were a wicked person wearing the trappings of virtue. Trappings means the, like paraphernalia, um, concealed by a disguise of righteousness, like a smoldering fire. And then he says, I never did anything against you. I never attacked your kingdom, uh, never attacked your city. I never insulted you. So it doesn't make sense why you're killing me. I'm just an innocent forest ranging monkey. I live on fruits and roots. And I was fighting with someone else. I wasn't fighting with you. I was fighting with someone else. <clears throat> so, um, so he says rhetorically, what kind of a kshatriya would do such a thing? You've been born in a royal family. You're reputed to be virtuous, you're said to be virtuous. Why do you go about with the appearance of decency when you are in fact not decent, O Rama? And then he lists different qualities of... Uh, uh, virtues, conciliation, generosity, forbearance, righteousness, etc., etc., etc. The virtues of kings. <clears throat> and again, he says, I'm just a forest dwelling beast, an animal of the forest. I'm living on roots and fruits. That's my nature, that is our nature. You are a man and a lord of men. Land, gold, and silver are reasons for conquest. But what possible profit could there be for you in the fruit belonging to me in this forest? And then he gives some lessons about what are the qualifications of a good king. And he says, you are not like this. You have no reverence for what is right, no settled judgment concerning statecraft. And because you are addicted to pleasures, you are driven by your passions. O Lord of men. So he's really speaking <laughs> very strongly. O king killer, O Brahmin killer. No, sorry. Not addressing him. He says, a king killer, a Brahmin killer, a cow killer, a thief, a man who delights in killing, an atheist, a man who marries before his older brother, all of them go 
to hell. Only, if, oh, this is interesting. So sometimes, you know, we like to think Brahmins never eat meat. Not according to the Ramayana of Valmiki, at least not in the critical edition. Only five among the five clawed creatures can be eaten by Brahmins and Kshatriyas, O Raghava. The hedgehog, the porcupine, the lizard, the rabbit, and the turtle. Huh? I don't remember the first one. Uh -huh. Hedgehog? Uh, like a groundhog. Like these little... You see the holes of them all over here. <laughs> I think those are hedgehogs. Yeah. Yes, yes, proposed. Yes. <laughs> and porcupine? Popolsko? Kuropatsa? Kuropatsa. Kuropatva. Okay. Um, maybe Iezosvish. Maybe. Okay. So why does he say that? He says, wise men do not touch my skin or bones, because he's a monkey. Uh, and my flesh must not be eaten. Yet I, a five-clawed creature, have been killed. So he goes on like this. If you had fought openly in battle, O Prince, I would have killed you. And you would now be gazing on Vaivasvata, God of death. But I, who am unassailable in battle, I cannot be conquered. Uh, have been struck down by you, and you could not be seen as a man sleeping under the influence of drink, may be killed by a snake. I could have given you Ravana, not killed in battle, but bound around the neck. Yet for that same outcome, you killed me, wishing to please Sugriva. He says, had my Tili, that is Sita, been hidden in the ocean waters or even in the underworld, at your command, I would have brought her back like the white she mule. I don't know what this uh, white she mule was about, but he's saying I could have brought her back. He could have just asked me and I could have brought Sita back for you. It is fitting that when I have gone to heaven, Sugriva should obtain the kingdom, but for you to have killed me unjustly in battle is not fitting. Granted, all people being what they are, are destined for death. But if what you have accomplished is proper, think of a good defense. Okay, and so that's going to be uh, the end of his speech. And then Rama is going to speak in his own defense. You want to hear what he says? Don't do it to us again. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, that's it for today. <laughs> no. Okay, this is Sarga 18 of Kishkindakanda. Stricken and losing consciousness, Vali had addressed to Rama those words that were civil, beneficial, consistent with righteousness and statecraft, yet harsh. And then there's more description of him. And then Rama finally begins to speak. And he speaks with unsurpassed words distinguished by righteousness and statecraft. Hmm. All right, now let's see what Rama says after these devastating words of Vali. How can you who do not understand righteousness, statecraft, pleasure, or even worldly conduct in your foolishness reproach me here today. My friend, in your monkey frivolousness, you wish to revile me here without consulting elders endowed with judgment and respected as teachers. So he's appealing to, I mean, this is, this is very, uh, He's speaking highly rhetorically now. This earth with its mountains, woods, and forests belongs to the Ikshvakus, as does the right of punishing and rewarding its beasts, birds, and men. So he's claiming that this whole land belongs to us. I'm an Ikshvaku, I'm a descendant of Ikshvaku, and we're in charge here, so we can do whatever we want. Sounds it sounds very uh, unecological. <laughs> it is protected by righteous Bharata, who is truthful and upright, who knows the true nature of righteousness, pleasure, and statecraft, and who devotes himself to punishing and rewarding. So he's referring to his brother Bharata. Because Rama has left for the forest, Bharata is now taken the position of uh, ruling the kingdom. So he praises him in more verses. Uh, firm in our own high duty. Honoring Bharata's command, we duly chastise whoever strays from the path of righteousness. But you violate righteousness and are condemned. I think the word here, righteousness, is translating the word dharma. But you violate righteousness and are condemned by your actions. You are engrossed in the pursuit of pleasures, and you have not kept to the path of kings. So he's referring to Vali as a king, not as a monkey. But before he was saying, you're just a monkey and you have no idea what you're talking about. But you could say, well, since when do we hear monkeys talking? And since when do we hear monkeys speaking Sanskrit? <laughs> And then, yeah, and then he speaks some, um, uh, sounds like Dharma Shastra. He says, an older brother, a father, and a bestower of learning. These three are to be regarded as fathers by one who walks the path of righteousness. A younger brother, one's own son, and also a pupil with good qualities, these three are to be thought of as one's sons, if righteousness is the standard here. Okay, so it's, uh, it's about hierarchy, and it's also about how 
others are regarded. He's saying not only one's actual father, but also one's older brother should be considered as a father. And not only the brother and the father, but also a teacher should be taken as a father. And then conversely, uh, one regards as son, the younger brother, the son, and a student that one is teaching. Oh, and here comes now the sort of, um, this is, I don't know, in a skeptical mood, one could say it's an easy uh, excuse for not acting according to Dharma. It's a, it comes up in the Mahabharata as well. He says, righteousness, that is Dharma, is subtle, O oh monkey, <laughs> and extremely difficult to understand even for good people. The self in the heart of all beings knows good and evil. Hmm. You are frivolous and consult with frivolous, weak-minded monkeys, like someone blind from birth who consults with others blind from birth. What then can be what then can you possibly see? But I shall tell you clearly the meaning of my statement. For you should not condemn me simply because you are angry. Learn, therefore, the reason why I have killed you. Okay, here comes the reason. You have forsaken everlasting morality and live in sin with your brother's wife. Out of lust, you committed a sinful deed. While great Sugriva is alive, you lived in sin with your daughter-in-law, Ruma. Uh, okay, so as we were discussing earlier, I think it's a diff It's not Tara, it's Ruma. But here she's referred to as daughter-in-law. Speaking like father. father. Yeah, I guess so. You acted according to your desires, monkey, and in violating your brother's wife, you departed from righteousness. That is why this punishment was administered to you. Leader of monkey troops, I see no way other than punishment to chastise someone who is opposed to righteousness and deviates from universal custom. Death is the punishment prescribed for a man who, out of lust, approaches his daughter, sister, or younger brother's wife. Now, Bharata is the ruler of the earth, and we merely carry out his commands. How then can we overlook your violation of righteousness? And he goes on about simply following Bharata in his mission to establish Dharma. Um, and he says also, I made a promise. Um, and so he says, for all these reasons, you must agree that your punishment is appropriate, he says. <laughs> it should, your chastisement must be viewed as righteous in every way. And then he says, so. Enough of this sorrow. Your death was decided upon justly. Tiger among monkeys. We were not being arbitrary. Uh, and then he speaks as if um, he's justifying on the basis of how 
a hunter can uh, legitimately hunt its prey. By snares, that's traps, by nooses and various traps, men in hiding or out in the open catch all kinds of beasts who run away terrified or confidently stand still. Men seeking meat shoot animals that are attentive or inattentive or even facing the other way, and there is nothing wrong with this. <laughs> and so, monkey, I struck you down with an arrow in battle, regardless of whether you fought back or not. After all, you are only a monkey. <laughs> he's a monkey. So he's a little bit, some inconsistency is there. Is, is he a monkey? Is he a king? Um, but okay, he's giving all kinds of reasons. And he says, as a monkey, you just follow your passions. And then Vali replies. Do you want to hear what Vali replies? You sure? <laughs> yes? yes? Yes. OK. Best of men, there is no doubt that what you have said is true. Indeed, a lowly person should not talk back to an exalted one. Please do not find fault with me, even for the unseemly displeasing words I spoke before by mistake. So now he's becoming humble and he's going to be submissive. For you understand worldly interests and know the truth, and you are devoted to the well-being of the people. Your immutable judgment about determining crime and punishment is correct. You know righteousness. Therefore, with righteous words, comfort even me, known to be a flagrant violator of righteousness. That was easy. Uh, and then he expresses concern about his son, Angada. Because he wants Angada to be uh, cared for. Rama then consoled Vali, who now saw things clearly. Quote, you must not worry about us or even about yourself, best of monkeys, for we made our determination with regard to you according to the law. Neither he who inflicts punishment on one who deserves punishment, nor he who is punished when he deserves punishment, perishes. Each serves the due process of justice. Neither he who inflicts punishment on one who deserves punishment, nor he who is punished when he deserves punishment, perishes. Each serves the due process of justice. Well, that's interesting because I was just reading and... Uh, we were speaking about this in a lecture in uh, Mumbai that when Maharaj Parikshit is speaking with the Dharma bull and asks him, so who has done this to you? cutting his legs, and he says, 
I don't know. It's hard to say. There are so many philosophies. Uh, then, Maharaj Parikshit says, Dharmang pravishi dharmagya dharma si brisha rupa drik. Yat adharma krita stanam suchakasyapi tat pavet. The king said, Oh, you who are in the form of a bull, you know the truth of religion and you are speaking according to the principle that the destination intended for the perpetrator of irreligious acts is also intended for one who identifies the perpetrator. You are no other than the personality of God. Yeah, this is one of those more difficult statements in Shastra. How to understand this. If somebody's done a crime, and if I see that that person's done a crime, shouldn't I point that person out and uh, see that that person is punished? Here it's saying, you can do that, but that subjects you to the same punishment. How is that? And it's saying that the Dharma bull understands this and therefore would not identify his um, tormentor. But here we just read in the Ramayana, Neither he who inflicts punishment on one who deserves punishment, nor he who is punished when he deserves punishment, perishes. So there's no uh, nothing to worry about. Each serves the due process of justice. Interesting. Well, um, that's kind of a cliffhanger in itself, a moral cliffhanger, in a way, from, from the side of the Bhagavatam. And we'd have to, maybe that's something for next time, but uh, to look at the purport. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm sort of ready to stop there. If anyone has any any reflections on Vali and Rama, what do you think of Rama's response to Vali? What do you think of Vali's response to Rama? Any anything we should think about, Dira Lalita? Oh, yes, very much. I was just um, really surprised that um, when when Lord Rama was explaining him being in disguise in in hide um, when he shoot the arrow to kill Vali, um, was he uh, seeing himself as a hunter, or was he seeing Vali only as a monkey? Uh, I mean, it's quite confusing because Vali is a person also. <laughs> uh, but uh, um, would you shed some light on this? Um, Rama, Rama seeing himself as a hunter, as he was saying that even hunter hides in order yeah. to kill animals. So... Um, um, was he actually seeing himself as a hunter of an animal? <laughs> <laughs> it seems that Rama is just grabbing at any and all possible ways of justifying himself. Because on the one side, he sees um, Bali as just a monkey. 
And on the other side, he is this very powerful and very formidable um, king of the monkeys who is uh, so powerful that, um, you know, Sugriva is, is warning before they meet, before this fight, Sugriva is warning Rama about how powerful Bali is. And it seems that Rama is deciding, okay, he's so powerful, so I can't face him directly. It's a bit like in the Mahabharata, the Kurukshetra War, um, occasionally the heroes resort to non-dharmic means in order to kill their opponents. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, but Rama is, for his justifications, he's, he's taking a, a variety of sources he's he's saying i'm doing i'm just i'm serving my my brother bharat uh, who is establishing dharma um and he's when he's saying that bali is adharmic because he's consorting with his younger brother's wife it doesn't seem like that would be an issue among monkeys. So he's there, he's addressing him as a, as a human being. So it's a lot of, um, it's, it's, a, it's a whole tangle of arguments and counter arguments. And it's complicated by the fact that we don't really know what is a vanara, as um, explained by the scholars who have uh, done this translation of the critical edition. From a scholar's point of view, what exactly is a vanara? We say monkey, but um, it could be that vanara simply means uh, tribals, people in the forest you know, sort of Adivasi sort of persons. Uh, but that also doesn't seem completely convincing for various reasons. So it's all highly ambiguous. So on, on one side, Lord Rama was really respecting um, his brother's advice, sort of giving him credit or um, sort of following on his advice that Bali is, the, is the, um, very dangerous. So was he fulfilling his um, actually showing him that he's following on his advice and in, in that regard giving him some respect for that uh, by hiding <laughs> Oh. Well, that's that's not, um, yeah. He's he does speak about the fact that he made a promise to Sugriva. So from that side, he's also claiming to be following Dharma. He's made a promise. He's keeping his promise. His promise was he would yes, kill. Fine. He would kill Vali, and so by hook or by hook, by crook, he's killing Vali. But it's also interesting that in the end, Bali submits and says, okay, actually, you're right. <laughs> and then in, I don't know if it's here, but it's in the Ram Charit Manas. Uh, this incident is uh, emphasizing that Bali feels very much blessed because uh, he is seeing Rama um, which means he's going back to Rama, he's being liberated, and so on. So there's a whole jumble of things going on. There's Dharma, but how do you take Dharma? How do you how do you determine? This is something which I've been thinking about because I may 
also write about this as as part of in my in this book about yoga and animal ethics because in the first part i want to write about dharma and how dharma is complicated and sort of the solution um, the solution is bhakti but to get to bhakti you have uh, this sort of transition process which is yoga I was just wondering if, if dharma is the same for vanaras as it is for <laughs> humans. Indeed. Something maybe different. It doesn't seem like it is in Vrindavan when you look at the monkeys. <clears throat> uh, Kavi Chandra, last word from Kavi Chandra today. Well, I just thought. Uh about about this argument that a hunter can kill uh animal and it is quite right to to kill animal for for uh meat and then but you are oh i'm sorry uh, okay i need to switch my video uh and then and then you are uh writing a book about, uh, you know, uh, animal ethics and about vegetarianism. And then this, this argument is like just the opposite of, I, I guess, what is your uh, topic of, of the book or, or, or it's something that is against our uh, view of, uh, you know, uh, animal killing. I mean, this argument. Um yeah but the way i'm writing is not just a sort of simple sort of um it's not going to be one dimensional it's going to be more complex i haven't decided yet whether i'll take up this specific uh episode because uh it might take up too much just too much space and i don't know We'll see. I may just mention it briefly and move on. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, but for me, it's it's striking argument, you know, like, like if uh, Lord Ramachandra is like, you know, in in some very quick way, f trying to find some arguments why, why he did it, you know, but maybe maybe the reason was quite different. But now he's collecting some dharma arguments you know <laughs> it's you know because if if you look at this uh, from from human uh, uh human point of view like what people where what people think where where they're when they uh make arg arguments you know then sometimes they are making different arguments that are yeah. you know not necessarily connected to to the reason yeah. why why they did uh, think yeah, uh, and, in this or other way yes and uh the whole the whole mood that prevails in the valmiki ramayana is that rama is a human being uh he's not in the mood of being the supreme personality of god he is a human being because it's a human who is uh able to kill uh ravana and so yes he's he's very disturbed because sita has been um abducted and um and so his reasoning may not be very consistent when he justifies killing Pali. but his um his personal reason we can say is because he's made a promise to sugriva and he wants sugriva's help uh to uh to find sita and so on defeat ravana and on that very political note <laughs> epic political note I will say thank you all so much for joining and wish you a wonderful week chanting the holy name and not being the same and
Uh, let's see if I'm going to be around next next week. What's happening next week? I think I'm still here. Next week is April Fool's Day. Ha uh ha. -huh. Okay. Yes, should be possible that we have a session. Um, and uh, if anyone has anything you want to speak about or any questions you want to raise next week, you can feel free to do so. Okay. Jai Ho, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Ananta Koti Vaishnavinda Ki Jai. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>